I used to be a fan of the Ford Ranger. I'm about done. Uh, I'll save that for another day. Uh, Ford Ranger Mazda B2300 in this case, uh, 2.3 four-cylinder manual transmission. Obviously, I'm going to skip over all of the junk and get right to the good stuff. So, uh, the method that I chose. Okay, backstory, quick. Um, two years ago, I put all new clutch components uh, in this truck. Uh, actually, Kevin Green, uh, RIP, put uh, uh, all new clutch components in this truck. Um, and recently, uh, it had an air bubble, basically, that I couldn't bleed out. Uh, bled it and bled it from the bottom side. Even found a video where you could like apply suction to the uh, reservoir. Tried it and tried it and tried it, that didn't work. So I decided to go with the method where you uh, pop the master cylinder out from the inside, um, pull it out to the firewall outside, you know, the engine side, uh, and pull the plunger out and just let it gravity bleed because what happens is that the, the cylinder, well, it's in now, but the, uh, the master cylinder sits at an angle up like this and the hoses come in this end and then so obviously you get air trapped up in here and no matter how much you bleed you're not going to get it out so uh, the method i chose was pulling it out leaving it kind of at that angle so it doesn't just all pour right out and then gently pulling the plunger out um, and just letting it gravity push all the all the air out and then putting the plunger back in putting it back together so i'm going to real quick go over the uh the method that i used because even though i had found a couple of videos it was still a pain in the butt and all the videos left out something so um, I did not take out the plastic fender well. This is an old truck. It's a beater. I use it to go to and from work. Um, so I don't care about the fender well. The other side looks similar because I had to do the alternator. Um, so I use this uh, multi-tool here, which is the uh, Harbor Freight one. Uh, if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. Harbor Freight stuff is awesome in the last handful of years. Uh, and this just awesome oscillates back and forth it's great for drywall uh, plastic fenders like this anyways uh, so here is uh, the master cylinder this is the hose to the reservoir this is the hose to the slave cylinder which is a pain in the butt down there uh, but we don't gotta mess with that today so uh, first things first you uh, cut this bad boy out make sure you have uh, access to uh, what you need to have access to there wasn't really anything up in here there was uh, one push pin for this which I'm going to um, which I'm going to professionally uh, zip tie to this so that it doesn't get to rubbing on anything okay ah, now move your seat back as far as you can and up in here uh, I can figure out how to turn the light on on this. There we go. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, the other side of the master cylinder. Um, so as you rotate, okay, this this clip I can't even get my finger in there to point at it, but you see the plastic eyelet, and then there's a plastic. It looks like it's black steel, but it's actually plastic uh, clip that holds that on. Uh, I've fought and fought and fought with that, not being able to see it, trying to, you know, open up the arms and pull the thing off. Basically, what I ended up doing was taking a pry bar and getting it right in there. You could do it with a screwdriver, but I had this other tool I'll show you here in a second, and just go pop, and uh, it, it pops off. Oh, so this is basically the, uh, the tool that I used because I didn't feel like trying to get a, you know, a flat blade screwdriver just in the right place. Here you've got a pretty good margin of error and uh, pop that off. Then, so you see how this has to rotate. It actually has a little recessed corner where it's sitting right now. You have to rotate that thing to fit through the square hole, 45 degrees. So from all the videos I had seen and just from looking at this thing, I assumed that this was a ring that spins on this part. Well, it's not. So you don't have to sit here and try and tap it with a screwdriver or put needle nose pliers in there and, and turn it. You can just go to the other side of the firewall because it's all one unit. So check this out. You, uh, uh, once you have that uh, clip off of the plastic, the rod, 
all you got to do is rotate this whole thing Brink, 45 degrees and it and it pulls right out uh, one step in between there that I forgot to tell you was this ridiculously over engineered thing the uh, that the plug the electric plug plugs into clutch safety switch and uh, uh, cruise control and a few other doodads this is the most ridiculously engineered piece of crap that I may have ever seen in my life um, so I left it off so that I could show you exactly where the tabs and, and whatnot are uh, this is straightforward enough you pull the pull the plug off there's a you know tap on a tab on the bottom right here a tab on the top fairly straightforward pain in the butt to get to but comes off then you lift this up there's a spring inside and because this just kind of floats on the shaft but then it's it's just you'll see um, so once you have the plug off you push this up the shaft and turn it until you have access to these here now it looks like there should be two tabs on each side because there's two holes on each side in reality just pop this thing off there's only one tab so I'm not sure why there's two holes but anywho, uh, in here you can see the ridiculous engineering of this thing um, once you know how it comes off it's uh, it's pretty simple but when you don't know how it comes off it is not very simple um, so you pop that off and then you have to kind of push this back up the shaft and wiggle it and it pops out of there and it's just uh, I don't know why they would do this I mean okay anyways um, so uh, now I'm gonna proceed to put that on the good news is that I have where I had almost half um, pedal play before I have you know like I don't know three-eighths of an inch or so but before it was moving like this much so it definitely did help um, it was worth the frustration um, and by hopefully by supplying you with this information you will have a lot less frustration and it will be even more worth it for you um, oh when you're gravity feeding the you know bleeding the air out of the after you pull the plunger out uh, which by the way is just a snap ring uh, the snap ring is a pain in the butt to get out of there um, once you pull the okay once you pull the master cylinder out you'll see the rod is still in there you'll see uh, where the rod goes into the cylinder there is uh, I'm gonna turn this flash off because it's blinding me okay um, there is a snap ring um, uh, it's it's a pain in the butt what you have to do and it really helps if there's another person is push the end of the rod and that pushes the plunger down and gives you a little bit of space on the back side of the snap ring because if you're just if, if the plunger is up tight against the back of the snap ring it just you know your snap ring pliers just grab and click and click and click and I don't want to tell you how long I spent fighting that battle and, and tweaking the ends of the pliers on the snap ring pliers and um, but eventually I was able to push the rod in you know just like a sixteenth of an inch hold it in so that I could get the snap ring pliers in there a little bit deeper and then the snap ring comes out not much danger of it flying away because it uh, it stays around the rod you don't even have to take it off the rod just let it float on the rod then um, you'll pull the first part which is just I think like a like a probably a dust seal more than anything um, and that comes out you know just by wiggling it out pretty easily and then um, my advice because what I did was I was I was wiggling and turning and seeing if there was anything threaded uh, and eventually I just tugged it and a whole thing came out and it got me a little bit goopy so what I would end up, uh, recommend doing is just putting your whole fist your whole palm around the thing so you have a little more control and just kind of wiggling it like this and as soon as the brake fluid starts to come out um, you're, you're probably good but mine was so black and dirty that I, I bled it through until I got clean fluid through it um, and that's it then push the thing back in put the snap ring back in um, put it in the hole come inside to make sure it's you know aligned through that square hole give it the quarter turn and and you're off to the races <sighs> I'm uh, I'm gonna go craft a strongly worded letter to Ford right now <laughs> uh, good luck let me know if this helps you out <laughs>